All right, awesome. Thank you everyone for joining us tonight. So I just wanted to go over a few housekeeping reminders before we get started, um, just to make sure that we have all of our uh, reminders set before our facilitators start talking to us about their individual institutions. So a reminder that more sessions are coming up uh, both tomorrow and then for the next few weeks uh, from different institutions from all over uh, to share a little bit more about their, their stories and their um, university's guidelines. The question and answer portion of the webinar is actually going to be held through the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. So that is how our university reps are going to answer your questions. So please be sure to either direct it to a specific counselor or a specific university if, if it's for uh, one person or if it's just a general question, we can answer those aloud for everyone. So um, please, you, and you can enter those questions in there at any part of the webinar tonight. So you don't have to wait for one person uh, to present. We can answer those on an ongoing basis. So just a reminder for our, our uh, admissions folks joining us to have that out as our, our uh, students ask those questions. And again, uh, the recording of this will be available on the StriveScan website that you can go back and get the slides or any contact information or anything um, from our universities tonight afterwards about a week after tonight's event. So that's available for you to go back and reference. And I will uh, turn off my audio and video and turn it over to our first representative, Miles, and allow him to share a little bit more about his school. All right, uh, my name is, hold on one second, that's an accident. All right, my name is Miles Corkman. I'm an admission counselor with Antioch College. Antioch is a small liberal arts institution in Yellow Springs, Ohio. It's uh, about a half hour from Dayton and an hour from Cincinnati and Columbus. Um, the college was founded in 1850 and began operation in 1853. It was founded by abolitionists. Um, Horace Mann was the first president. You may be familiar with him as he's regarded as the father of the American public school system. And it was at the college's first commencement, he coined the phrase, be ashamed to die until you have won some victory for humanity. And that has since been woven into the mission and vision of the college, as the college has always um, been very progressive politically. Um, and uh, so the mission of Antioch is, uh, is based around the belief that scholarship and life experience are strengthened when linked so our students um, get out of the classroom through our uh, co-op program, which we've had for about uh, 100 years. And um, so uh, our students have this back and forth experience that they get to apply what they learn in the classroom, in the real world immediately. And then they bring these experiences back with them uh, to discussion-based classes. So it really creates a very rich environment for academic discussion. Um, much of the uh, you know, campus life, the curriculum centers around social justice and environmental stewardship. Um, our, our students self-design majors among these four academic divisions. So the self-design major allows students to take greater ownership of their education and even do an interdisciplinary approach to their studies, blending the arts and sciences, the humanities and social sciences, etc. So what you see here is uh, essentially what you can self-design your major in. Um, it doesn't necessarily constitute um, a primary area of focus or a major. Uh, for instance, um, students can supplement their self-designed major with, uh, with Spanish or French language and culture, but it can't be a major, for instance. Um, so students have a lot of agency, though, in how they, in how they design their majors. Here are some examples of what students have done in recent years. Um, so our students don't have to declare their major until the spring quarter of their second year. So by that time, they'll have two co-op jobs, two co-op jobs under their belt, much more clear sense of, of what they want to do with their studies. Um, the parameters for, for the self-design major are course offerings and faculty expertise. So students can't just self-design an engineering degree or something like that, for example. Um, so we offer four to one student faculty ratio. So students work very, very closely with their faculty, with their faculty members. Um, the students have three advisors. They have um, 
the typical academic advisor, co-op advisor, and a language advisor. Of course, um, you know, um, classrooms look a lot different than this right now due to the pandemic. So we're doing, you know, properly social distancing and all of that. And we are also offering um, a hybrid model. So students have the option to be completely remote uh, if they wish um, during the pandemic. So I touched a little bit on co-ops. So we'll go into more detail about that here. So um, co-op is essentially like an immersive internship. It's much more different than like a an internship where you're just kind of doing um, menial tasks, grabbing coffee for the boss, things like that. Um, it's all about meaningful work for the student. All students do it regardless of major, and they can even ex you know do co-ops that are outside of their declared major. So if they're doing a pre-law path, there's nothing stopping them from going and working on an organic farm somewhere. Um, so it's up to students if they want to do a wide approach to their co-ops or go deep. And you know, and I'll use law again, so students can do a deep approach and do all their co-ops in the law office settings if they know they want to go to law school. And if they do it that way, they can build on their prior experiences and get bigger and better co-ops, or you can kind of try out different things. No wrong way of going about it. There are opportunities uh, locally, nationally, and internationally. Students co-op in um, every continent aside from Antarctica so far. So uh, there are a lot of options there. Um, this is for credit. Most of these opportunities are paid. Of course, if you go abroad, there's some visa issues. So you'd be working for like room and board, stipend, something like that. Um, but um, the only academic requirement during, uh, during co-op is that students uh, keep a co-op journal and stay in touch with their, their co-op advisor. Other than that, students are living and working somewhere else. Um, students uh, experience a lot of personal growth in these experiences. And you're, they are required to have three of these experiences by the time they graduate with an optional fourth their, uh, their fourth year. And here are some examples of things students have done in recent years. Um, so it really does run the gamut. It's, uh, and it's a huge database of co-op jobs. Uh, there are more co-op jobs to apply to than, than there are students. Um, student body is very small, 115 students. 60% uh, are from out of state. Um, very diverse student body and um, it's very diverse among staff and faculty as well. We have a lot of student organizations based around different hobbies and, uh, and identities and we're very much community oriented. Uh, there's always something going on on campus. We have um, different events throughout, uh, throughout each academic term. Of course, it does look a little different right now with COVID. Uh, we even have like kind of uh, wellness meetings over Zoom and things like that. There's recently uh, uh, something about seasonal affective disorder. So obviously it can be a little worse um, when people are cooped up inside, but thankfully the weather's starting to break. Um, and, uh, but under normal circumstances, there would be, you know, performances, live music, um, speakers, things like that. So always something going on between campus and town. And uh, Yellow Springs is about a five to 10 minute walk from campus. And it's a pretty vibrant community as well. Um, very large aspect of uh, campus life at Antioch is the farm. We offer farm to table dining program. Uh, the farm is it's an organic internal farm during the growing season supplies about a third of produce in our dining hall um, and the kitchen everything is made from scratch. So uh, the farm and uh, the Glen Helen Nature Preserve uh, across the street we, we refer to as our living laboratories. Um, for instance, um, in the science labs, uh, much of the dye comes right off the farm. So students can do field research at the farm and and in the, uh, the nature preserve. Um, let's see, so Yellow Springs, uh, the village, about 3,500 people, very artistic kind of progressive community. Um, it has uh, numerous festivals and different events throughout the year. Um, has a strong connection with, with the campus. Um, the application is free on Common App. It's test optional. It's always been test optional well before the pandemic. Um, and uh, we have holistic reviews of all applications. So um, your transcripts are worth just as much as your, or your essays are worth just as much as your transcripts and vice versa. So we take everything into consideration. 100% of admitted students receive financial aid and we meet 100% of financial need based on the FAFSA. Uh, we also offer the, what is called the Antioch College Works Program, which allows all Pell eligible students to receive full tuition scholarships uh, as well as uh, guaranteed campus work uh, and aid with uh, getting to and from an international co-op experience, as well as launch placement to a job through the co-op office. So uh, lots of lots of uh, good stuff there. So if anybody has any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. Uh, I have the office number and mine there as well as my email. And uh, thank you for your time. 
All right, thanks. And we will next pass it over to Bridget to share a little bit more. All right, hello. Um, my name is Bridget England. I'm one of the assistant directors of admission at the University of Mount Union. Uh, so thank you for joining us tonight. And I'm just gonna give some kind of quick facts, a little bit of an overview of how you can see if Mount Union might be a good fit for you. Um, really right here, I just want you to take in some of the beautiful pictures, <laughs> but Mount Union is a smaller private liberal arts school. Um, so we have about 2000 students um, and about 300 graduate students as well. Um, most of our grad programs are online though, so really uh, it's all about the undergraduate students and you get the experiences on campus and the research opportunities as well, um, which is very nice. Um, for academics, we do have 56 different options for majors. And similarly to Antioch, you do not need to declare your major right away. This is actually a great school to enter into if you might be undecided because it's very uh, flexible pathways towards your major. Uh, there's only a few majors and, or programs that you would need to start in right away. And those are nursing, engineering, and music education. Um, otherwise, if you declare by the end of your sophomore year, we can get you uh, pretty, pretty much on a four-year track, which we always aim to do. Um, another thing that we are known for is our integrative core. So our curriculum is nationally ranked and we're currently 13 out of any school that has um, a curriculum. Sorry, let me mute my phone here. Um, so essentially the core really focuses on your written and oral communication skills. And even though you're learning about different content through the core curriculum in the humanities, the fine arts, natural sciences and social sciences, you are working on your written and oral communication skills that whole time. So even if the content is not really uh, necessary for what you are going to do and your career, you're learning the skills that will kind of move you forward. Additionally, all majors do have some sort of hands-on practicum experience, whether it's an internship or clinical hours or uh, something of that nature. And finally, our students finish with a, um, a capstone project that is designed to work in a small group and implement something that benefits our uh, local community. Um, if you come on campus, we would love to show you around. Uh, we are open for visits and I'll include a link in the chat later um, if anyone is interested in scheduling a visit. Uh, but we are located in Alliance, Ohio. Alliance has about 25,000 residents. It's kind of a small suburban slash rural area um, where there's a lot to do both on and off campus. Um, in our community, actually over 70% of students live on campus. And I think one of the reasons is we have some very nice housing options, particularly uh, as you kind of progress through your sophomore and senior year. So pictured here is a first year dorm, which you would have the option of uh, touring on campus. And then following that, we have suites, apartments, and townhouses. Um, those are all options available for the sophomores through seniors. Getting involved on campus is uh, very important. So we do have over 90 different student organizations. And for a campus that only has 2,000 students, that is a lot. And that goes to show you that most of our students are involved in more than one thing. Um, we do consider ourselves an and school where you can be a student athlete and in other different groups and even study abroad and have a challenging major. So uh, we really do try to develop your whole, your whole persona while you're at Mount Union and allow you to have many of these opportunities. Athletics are actually uh, very important at Mount Union. So we are a division three institution, uh, but it's a place where you can have that small school atmosphere, but play sports that have a D1 energy about them. Um, even if you're not interested in playing sports yourself, I was not athletically gifted, but I've been a lifetime fan of athletics and it's awesome to be able to go to our football games, our basketball games. Um, we traditionally do very well across the board in athletics. Um, if you're into sports, but you also don't want to do them, you know, as kind of a varsity athletics track, we do have club and intramural sports that are so popular. Over 80% of our students actually are involved in intramurals. <laughs> so we did try to get creative and still give some sort of intramural opportunities uh, despite the pandemic. So it's a very Ohio, but we had intramural cornhole actually that we could do socially distance and uh, kind of keep everyone safe. 
and we even did like basketball shootout competitions and stuff like that. Um, since we were in person this past year, uh, which was really fortunate, uh, we did have to get creative with how we keep campus life going uh, so that students weren't just sitting around. Uh, we really wanted them to still have a safe but really positive student experience on campus. Um, if you are interested in applying, if there are any juniors here, the application opens typically August 1st. Um, we accept the common application or our own on our website. Um, current seniors, there is no application deadline uh, at Mount Union, uh, and we do have a rolling admission. So we are currently test optional and will remain test optional. But just so you know, if you do submit your test scores, we will actually only consider them if they benefit you uh, for your academic scholarships, for example, um, or for admission in general. So uh, you really have nothing to lose. If you have been fortunate enough to take the ACT, uh, you know, we can make that worth your time. Um, I definitely encourage you at this point, if you would like to see more, please schedule um, a campus visit. Um, here's some information about how you can contact us and our office. Um, but additionally, I will put the visit link in the chat. Sorry if you can hear kids bouncing around upstairs. <laughs> um, but in any case, uh, I would love to have you guys on campus to visit, kind of see what it's about. And if you're not familiar with Alliance, uh, we are about 30 minutes east of Canton. Um, so we're kind of in that general area. But thank you very much. And hopefully I'll get to answer some questions later too. All right, awesome, thank you. And next up, we have John Carroll University to share a little bit more. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Allison Goldhammer. I'm one of the Associate Directors of Enrollment at John Carroll University. Uh, we are a beautiful suburban residential campus, about 60 acres, uh, located in University Heights, Ohio, which is a suburb about 10 minutes outside, uh, or 10 miles, I should say, outside of Cleveland, Ohio. Um, we are a um, mid-sized Jesuit liberal arts institution. Um, so that really is a great benefit for our students, um, that personalized attention that they get during their time on campus. Um, but they also get this amazing access to all that Cleveland has to offer. We're very fortunate to have an amazing alumni network that stretches, of course, within the city as well as worldwide. So that's a really, really wonderful uh, benefit for our students. I always say they kind of get the best of both worlds. When you're on campus, you get this amazing college town sort of suburban vibe but you're less than 20 minutes away from a major city and all that it has to offer our students. US News and World Report actually ranked uh, John Carroll University number two in undergraduate teaching in the Midwest um, for 2020. And that's because we really strive for more than what's required academically, personally, and socially. Um, and both our faculty and our staff are really there to empower our students to achieve what others really think is improbable. Um, I think our size really is an amazing advantage uh, for our students. Um, we are an uh, undergraduate focused institution, although we do have some incredible graduate programs um, and master's degrees offered at John Carroll University. But what's so great about being an undergraduate focused institution is that while our faculty do amazing research, um, they really do choose JCU because teaching is their top priority. They're very much focused on the students, on their academic experience, and really their overall personal growth. Um, our faculty are going to be the ones teaching our, our students and their classes, which do remain pretty small. As you can see, our average class size is only around 20 students, and we do have a 13 to 1 student to faculty ratio. So our faculty do get to know our students not only um, in an academic way or on an academic level, but they really do develop these amazing personal relationships that really allow our students to thrive. Um, they get to know the real you, they get to know your strengths, and they really are able to help translate that into you finding the right major, the right courses, and ultimately that right career goal, that right fit for you. Um, they're able to support you both inside and outside of the classroom and really help our students reach their potential and, and meet their ultimate goals. Um, so at John Carroll, we have over 70 different academic programs um, that really allow our students to explore both in the College of Arts and Sciences and our Bowler College of Business. What's really cool is that you can major in one area and double major or minor in the other. There's no limitations to our students exploring programs within um, the two different colleges at John Carroll University. Um, we are nationally ranked for our Bowler College of Business. It's definitely something that we're known for, uh, specifically for accountancy within that school. 
school. Um, we do have the number one, or our, uh, this year the number one, but typically we rank in the top um, uh, for our CPA pass rates in the state of Ohio year after year, we rank in the top 20 nationally, which is really wonderful to see year over year. Um, so those are definitely some things that we're known for. Um, sort of one that we're um, becoming very well known for is our exercise science and sports studies program, uh, which is something that we are becoming nationally recognized for as well. We are often highlighted, especially around Super Bowl time um, for our alumni that have um, have taken over a number of leadership positions as general managers, uh, recruiters and scouts and coaching staffs uh, for a number of NFL teams. Um, we are currently, uh, we are proud to have um, currently, I believe 20 alumni working both in the sidelines and in the front office for um, different NFL teams, which is just really, really cool. Outside of the classroom, uh, our students are equally successful uh, in their leadership opportunities within the different service organizations that we have, um, the different experiences that we offer um, from an extracurricular standpoint, and then of course athletics. So if students are interested in becoming an athlete at John Carroll, we are NCAA Division Three. We have 23 varsity sports currently on our campus, um, most of which are um, experiencing their season right now. Uh, we have about 22 of our 23 sports that are competing currently, uh, which has been really fun for our um, athletic staff. Um, and JCU has um, a wide array of, of sports that you can get involved in, as well as clubs and intramural sports, um, if that's what you're looking to get involved in. So you can apply to John Carroll exclusively through the Common Application. It is a free application for us. So there's no cost to our students to apply. We do have an early action deadline of December 1st. Um, and that means that by applying to December 1st, our students are given full consideration for our, our uh, merit-based scholarships, which they are regardless of when they apply. But you're also able to apply for our mission-based scholarships. These include our honors program, our Arupe Scholars Program, which is service and social action-based. We have a leadership scholars program, which is surprisingly leadership based. And then we also have a social innovation fellows program, which is an entrepreneur uh, entrepreneurship based program and very, very popular. Um, those are additional scholarships that would stack on top of any merit that a student is already awarded. And then we also have a number of additional endowed and academic department based scholarships that students can also become eligible for. Uh, we are test optional and plan to be at least for the next several years. Um, so that is a really nice benefit for our students as well. And we do focus on a holistic review process. So we're not a school that just plugs GPA and test score into a computer and makes a decision. We really try to get to know our students on, on a personal level to see if they would really be a great fit and would thrive and be successful on our campus. Um, we do encourage you to visit our website. Um, jcu.edu slash admission. We are currently open for campus tours. Um, they're individualized tours. So obviously trying to keep everybody safe and comfortable during this crazy time. Um, you can schedule that at go.jcu.edu slash visit. And I'll also throw that in the chat if you're interested in setting that up. We offer those Monday through Fridays and several Saturdays as well. So hopefully that would fit with your schedule. Um, and the best way for you to stay in touch and learn more about John Carroll is, of course, to connect with us. So I've included my information here. You can also find your particular enrollment manager's information on our website. That will be your go-to person for everything. Uh, again, focusing on that personalized approach, your enrollment manager works with you from everything from application to admission, from scholarship to financial aid. So it's a really great way for you to connect with us and with the university. So please uh, reach out to me if you have any questions, and I look forward to answering those for you later as well. Awesome, thank you. And then we have our next university, which is Mount St. Joseph. Share a little bit more about what they have. Awesome, thank you so much. Guys, I am Matt Wright. I'm our, one of our admissions counselors here at Mount St. Joseph University. I absolutely love the Mount. We have been around since 1920, so we are celebrating our centennial. Uh, we celebrated it last year, but obviously with the pandemic, we didn't get too much celebrating done. So we're definitely looking forward to opening things back up and getting back to it. Um, we are a Catholic-based university. We were started by the Sisters of Charity. Um, and their whole goal with starting them out was to create a place where they could train up students to impact their community and not just come in and get professional studies and go out and do, and, um, do work, but really come in and build skills that they could um, become community workers. And so uh, they started that with a nursing and education program, but we have 
grown so much since then. And every single one of our majors still has those core values in it, that you're learning stuff that you're going to go and you're going to impact your community for good and really make a meaningful life. Um, talking specifically about my, there we go. Um, specifically about offerings that the Mount has. Um, we are super, super committed to getting our students out into the community for that very same reason. Um, we have a career and experiential education office, which really works with our students to take them out of the classroom where they are learning so much cool stuff and getting them into placements here in Cincinnati um, to really allow them to implement all of the awesome things. Um, through that, we actually require all of our students to take a co-op experience, um, Experiential education really, really benefits our students in a ton of different ways. Um, over a third of our students end up getting hired uh, full time by their co-op experiences once they leave the mountain. That really helps to contribute to the stat that you see on the screen right here, which is we have a 99.6% career outcome rate. What that means is for all of our students within six months of graduating from school, 99.6% of them are in a full-time position in the field they're studying in or have been accepted and are pursuing grad school in the field that they were studying in. We are super, super passionate about this because we really want to see our students uh, find a return on investment, not just for uh, obviously the money that they spend going to college, but also the time that they commit to really learning and empowering themselves through the education here at the Mount. Uh, more specifically, um, ways that we also help our students throughout their um, program here at the Mount to become job ready. Uh, we have what we call the Talent Opportunity Program. This is a super cool program. Um, it runs year round and we are constantly doing, um, holding events and providing services for students to develop themselves as a, um, as a future worker, as a future participator in their community. And so that, is service projects out inside of the community, out, out in the community. That is um, networking events with uh, local influencers. Uh, that is an etiquette dinner that where we bring in students and um, really kind of put them through the paces of like, hey, this is like what fancy dinner looks like. Um, and that was something that was really cool for me. Of like, I just was not, um, I did not grow up in a place where I had kind of these access to um, job markets um, or opportunities like that. And it really uh, allows our students to learn so much about um, how to present themselves and how to be ready for the world after college. Um, we do have a huge emphasis on service learning. As you can tell, we are so, so um, excited about getting our students out and serving in the community. Uh, you can see in the bottom right there, there's a girls in uh, the local park working in, in an environmental setting. Um, and uh, they are not just there like picking up trash and stuff. They are really deep diving into what the ecosystem needs and how they, with their backgrounds in biology, with their backgrounds in science, can impact that for not just this year, but years to come. And that goes across all of our majors. We really want our students to learn not just how you can go and clock into your nine to five, but really how you can take these skills and build um, a meaningful life and a meaningful impact on your local um, community. Uh, one of the last things I'll talk about on this slide is study abroad. We do have tons of study abroad opportunities. We actually have a direct sister school in London where a lot of our students will go for a full semester or even more um, to study. For some students that does feel like a big commitment. So we actually have what we call um, mini study abroad trips, which are about two week long trips that students can take anytime throughout their academic career. And uh, it is such a cool experience for maybe students that don't uh, want to take that full international experience of like six months away from home, but still want to broaden their horizons. And so you can see the students down in the bottom left. Those are students that went to Ireland and really um, got to experience a full breadth of what international travel is. And it really uh, transforms your perspective on um, what life can be inside of this world. Uh, another really cool highlight is we just opened up a new recreation and fitness center on our campus. Um, this is our Centennial Field House. It is there to not just benefit our students um, in a physical sense, but also to allow them to have space to commune, allow them to have space to better themselves, not just in their body, but in their spirit and their mind. Um, we are super blessed. It is the uh, only uh, full size indoor track within a hundred mile radius of the mound. So we uh, feel super privileged to have this space ready and going for our students. Um, there is a full size Olympic weight room in there. Um, and not only is this gonna be a really big benefit for obviously our student athletes and our exercise science majors, but this is open to all students to come in and just make a community here at the Mount. Um, so we're super excited to see how this space continues to benefit our students um, this year and beyond. And then 
uh, guys, we are so, so passionate about being here in Cincinnati. You can see in the map there, um, we are about 10 minutes from downtown. We are about two turns away. And guys, there is so much to do here in Cincinnati. Um, I, one of the uh, previous presenters mentioned like kind of having the best of both worlds. And I really think that's true about the mountain as well. You really get the small family feel here on campus as well as in Delhi, which is our um, local community. But there is so much out in Cincinnati. There are a ton of fun opportunities of like uh, the zoos and Finley Market, which is a like street market, as well as workplace opportunities with our health, healthcare networks, Fortune 500 companies, major sports franchises and beyond. Um, we do have a com uh, comprehensive review as well as our test optional for our application process um, for seniors that is rolling and open now um, for juniors that will open up on September 1st of this year. And then uh, any student coming to the Mount does receive an academic scholarship. If you are admitted to the Mount, minimum you will receive is $11,000 and we will scale that up. Um, we do have additional scholarships, but this is definitely the one that we lean into the most for a lot of our students. And then other than that, guys, we would just love to host you on campus. We are open um, now for campus visits. We are doing things very social distancing and very mindful of keeping you guys safe and our staff safe, but we'd love to have you guys there. I'll throw this link in the chat as well for you guys to pursue. So thank you so much. Once again, I'm Matt Wright. I'm with Mount St. Joe, and I look forward to meeting you guys soon. All right, awesome. Thanks, Matt. And we'll turn it over to Lindsay to share a little bit more. Hello, I am Lindsay Stevens. I am the Senior Associate Director of Admission at Wittenberg. Excited to be here today with you. Um, and I'm just gonna give you an overview of everything Wittenberg while you're on here. Um, so a list of all the academic programs that we offer. Um, at Wittenberg, we have really small classroom sizes. You'll see the ratio there, 13 to one. Um, average class size is around 19 or 20, give or take. Um, our biggest programs are biology, business and education, um, probably followed in no particular order by psychology, English, um, political science, music is one of our bigger ones. Um, professors teach all of our classes and they are also the advisors to students. Um, advising at Wittenberg is not a, um, here's your classes, go take the next ones. It's here's the classes you've taken. What have you liked? What are your goals? How can we work toward those goals? How are we gonna work toward them next semester? Um, so very comprehensive advising process by our professors. Um, classrooms at Wittenberg are very interactive. Um, so even just the setup of them, you can see that when you're touring campus and everything that there's um, discussion-based, there's activities, there's research-based, depending on exactly what area you're in, um, but strong academic classroom setting. Um, athletics. We're good. I don't know if you know this, but we're good. We have a very strong Division Three athletic program, and I always tell our visitors, we're strong in the classroom, and that's what makes us strong on the field. Um, we have a men's basketball team, and our football team have the winningest records in Division Three history. Um, our women's volleyball team has been on fire for the last couple decades. We send swimmers and runners to the national meets. We host tournaments because we usually are ranking number one in, in our athletic league. Um, so it's a very strong athletic program. It's free for all of our students to attend the athletic programs. You just have to show your Wittenberg ID and, and you can go in and support um, our, our, your, your classmates and your teammates and, and people that you know on campus. Um, and it's a big, pretty big source of social life on campus. Um, it, of intramural sports and you can see kind of on on the right hand side there the different athletics that we offer varsity wise but then also club so it's a very active campus in terms of athletics and, and in, in terms of students staying um, fit and and active on campus that way active citizenship so when we talk about this it really means two different things um, it means our study abroad and it means the community do right on campus you can see some of the programs, um, the WIT programs that we offer. So it's groups of Wittenberg students that travel abroad with one or two Wittenberg professors. The professors teach some gen ed courses there, but then students are also interacting um, with the community while they're there. Um, so Wittenberg, Germany, Costa Rica, South Africa are popular programs that way. We also offer other programs in other countries that students are able to travel to. And it really just depends on your comfort level um, with, with 
going abroad by yourself, going group going abroad with a group of Americans that maybe aren't Wittenberg. The WIT and WIT programs, I'm sorry, the WIT and WIT Costa Rica and South Africa programs, the nice benefit for our students is that their financial aid stays with them. So whatever you're paying to attend Wittenberg is what you would pay to study abroad there. And then our community service, and you can see a big picture of some students packing for the LNI. Um, and our students service in the spring. So we ask all of our students to complete 30 hours of community service in the local area, working with after school programs. There's all kinds of different programs with animals. There's all kinds of um, areas where you can volunteer in shelters or pantries, the police and fire departments, all kinds of educational programs. So um, we ask you to choose a semester, do your 30 hours, and there's a reflection on there. And our hope in doing that will take that service to whatever community you go to next and continue on with that service. The fine arts at Wittenberg. Um, you know, I always, when I talk to groups, equate the fine arts to being similar to the way we cheer on our athletics. We support our, our students, we support our, um, our artists that are in the music and the theater areas and dance and, and in studio art, um, the same way we cheer for our athletics. And, and for our students. So there's always different presentations and shows and, and um, art openings that our students have. And we enjoy being a part of that as, as part of campus. Leadership and, and activities. When I talk about Wittenberg being an active campus, it's not just in athletics and the fine arts. We do a whole lot of things. Um, I'm continually amazed at how busy Wittenberg students are. Um, even in their office before I get to my office in the morning. Um, but they're just up and they're busy and they're involved. We do a big student activities fair the first full week of classes so that you can walk around and for and sign up to get emails or text messages or anything like that about when meetings are being attended. And I always think it's good. Find one or two things that you're passionate about that you can be involved in. Don't do a million things so that you end up doing nothing, um, but find a couple things that, that you're really involved in and can make a difference while you're on campus. Achieving independence, so all kinds of different things. Um, our housing situation, we have um, on campus residence halls or dorms, as, as you might know them. And then we also have the Witten Burbs. Um, so those are our off-campus houses. Once students achieve a junior status, they can move into those off-campus houses that are all owned, I'm sorry, houses and apartments that are Wittenberg and, and overseen by Wittenberg. So it's kind of baby steps out into the real world. Um, this year, we'll be introducing our themed living communities, and you can see some of those listed there. Those are all in our residence halls. Um, so you can come in living with people who have the same interests and the same, same goals that they might have. Um, so I'm excited to see how that goes this year. Um, life after wit. So lots of outcomes. And the one statistic I love to share, because it kind of means you're not going home to your parents' is that we have a 98% placement rate. So 98% of our students within one year of graduation are placed into jobs, graduate school, or a combination of both of those. And we really do that with some of that advising that I talked about. We talked about that with our internships. Um, and then our alumni network is really helpful in that regard. It's free to apply either the Wittenberg application or the common application. And then some of our scholarships are listed here. You can see the merit-based ones on the left-hand side and the special interest scholarships and fine arts on the right-hand side. Essentially, you can have one from each area and all of this information is online so you can check that out. Next steps for you are really just to connect with us. Um, social media is a great way. Um, the, the wits happening handle there is wonderful to see what's going on. Um, all the time at campus. I, I join them all because or I follow them all because I think it's neat to inform my job that way. And we any questions you have, put them up in the chat and I'll be happy to answer. Awesome. Thank you. And last but not least, we have Ethan uh, to finish out this portion of tonight's webinar. Hello, give me one second to just share my screen.
All right, so my name is Ethan Gallant. I'm actually a current senior at Heidelberg University. I'm serving as an outreach and recruitment intern for the Heidelberg Admission Office before I transition to being an admission counselor after I graduate in a couple months. So to get started, some fast facts about Heidelberg. Our undergraduate enrollment is approximately 1,100 students a year. We also have a student faculty ratio of about 13 to one and an average class size of 17. So like some people were saying earlier, we do really value that student and professor relationship. Uh, I have been out to eat with professors. Uh, I know professors who host meals for their graduating seniors at their own houses. Uh, but out of those professors, 83% uh, of them do have the highest degree available in their field. So you are really learning from experts. And then we have 92% of our students that are involved in extracurricular activities. And then our acceptance rate into medical schools is 84% within that first year that people graduate from Heidelberg. And I really credit that to our on-campus cadaver lab. We do have three cadavers on campus at all times who, and our pre-med students are able to work on all of those throughout their four years here. And I think that really gives people a bit of an edge when they're applying to medical school already having that experience. Residence life on Heidelberg, you get a lot of different options. And while we do have traditional dorm options that really just look like your normal dorm room, we actually have about 10 or 11 different rooming options on campus. Only four of them look like that really traditional setup. Uh, and then we have our pods, which are basically just very small, little tight-knit things closer to dorm rooms, but you get a little bit more independence and you're living with less people. Uh, suite style and apartments where you really are just living with your friends and you're not sharing space with other people. A lot of people like that. We have honor specific housing, women specific housing, gender equality, and themed living. Dining at Heidelberg, we actually brought in a new food service provider, Parkhurst Dining, uh, four years ago now, and they serve great food about I think that the last time they updated it, 70% of our things in our dining hall are sourced from within 50 miles of the school. So our main dining hall is Herneman Refectory, uh, and that's right in the middle of campus. And the nice thing about that is that all of our meal plans do come with completely unlimited access to Herneman Refectory from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. when they close. There are also some dorm buildings that are directly attached to it, so you don't even have to go outside to get to it. I can speak from experience that when I lived in those buildings, I would go to the dining hall six times a day and would not be charged any extra for it. We also have Berg Bistro 1850, our on-campus restaurant, and that is where students can spend their Berg Bucks. Each of our meal plans comes with 150, 250, or 350 in Berg Bucks, which is money specifically for you to spend there and at a couple other places on campus. The Sour Wine Power Bar uh, just gives you quick grab and go options. You can get protein shakes, smoothies, sandwiches, different things like that. The Clean Play Station is actually inside of our dining hall and that is an allergy friendly zone. Uh, so I think we have six of the seven most common allergies in the world. None of those allergens are present in there. And then if a student does have a serious food allergy, they can document that with the school and then we'll make sure that that is also not present in that station. We do have vegetarian, vegan, gluten-free, and allergen-free options at every meal there. And lastly, we have the Heidel Bean, a little bit of a pun, that's our on-campus coffee shop, and that is another place where you can spend those bird bucks. So Heidelberg uh, is a liberal arts style of education, and what that basically means is that you do need 120 minimum uh, credit hours to graduate and that those 120 hours are divided roughly into thirds. So you spend about 40 credit hours in your major, 40 in your general education classes, and then 40 in electives. Uh, so elective classes cover pretty much just anything that don't fall into the other two. I know some people don't major in art or anything like that, and they decide to take a few extra art classes because it relaxes them. Basically, you can do whatever you're interested in there. Here are a few of our academic programs. Um, I'm not going to go through all of them, but since this is recorded, feel free to pause if you are watching this later. And then some advantages that Heidelberg does op offer is student research. So we actually have a couple different conferences every year where students are able to present their research. And we also have a handful of students every year who do end up actually getting some of their research published. We have great study abroad opportunities, whether you are an actual like Spanish major or German major, anything like that, or if you just want to study abroad for the experience, but it's not really required or anything. Most of the time we can make that happen for you and still keep you on track for graduation. 
We have our honors program, which is basically a different approach to general education that takes those same subjects, presents them in a different way. Uh, it's really aimed at innovating the classroom and making you a lifelong learner as opposed to someone who thinks that their education stops when they finish college. And then our four-year graduation guarantee. So basically, as long as you are attending your classes and passing your classes, uh, if anything goes wrong on our end, a class is not offered uh, when we said it would be a professor suddenly leaves, the class can no longer be offered, anything like that. If it is our fault that you are not graduating from Heidelberg in four years or less, we are going to cover 100% of the cost for your extra semester or extra year until you can get out of here. So that's tuition, room and board fees, everything paid for until we can get you to graduate. Next thing I'd like to talk about is our Hype Career Ready program. So about six years ago, we actually asked a lot of employers what things uh, fresh college graduates were really missing. And they gave us this list of uh, skills, which is communication, collaboration, conflict management, values, work styles, and job search skills. So we actually have three days a semester where we completely cancel classes for the day. In the morning at about 9.30, uh, we have a keynote speaker. Uh, if you recognize Terry Cruz in the bottom right corner, he was one of our keynote speakers last year. And they really key in on one of these skills. And then throughout the rest of the day, we have breakout sessions. Uh, and each different breakout session is aimed at addressing one of these skills. And the nice thing about this is it's a co-curricular program. So every single person who does their undergrad at Heidelberg goes through this program. Uh, and then you actually do get a second transcript when you graduate that says, I have taken six workshops in communication, seven workshops in collaboration, conflict management, and so on, so that you can really show that to your first employer and get that edge in that first job interview that you have out of college. Next thing is our plus one advantage program, which as far as we know is something fairly unique to Heidelberg. Uh, and it is basically something where if you come to Heidelberg, you can major in whatever you want. As long as you graduate within four years or less and you keep a 3.0 the entire time, you can actually come back for one more year and earn your MBA, your master's in business administration with no tuition cost at all. There's a few hundred dollars worth of fees for that and that's it. And it'll add a great skill set for you no matter what you're really thinking of going into. The skills that come with an MBA are very valuable. All right, and we will wrap up tonight's uh, webinar. Again, thank you to all of our college representatives uh, for taking time out of your night to share a little bit more about your institutions and what you have to offer. And for our students, thank you for taking time out of your night to uh, learn a little bit more about the incredible institutions that have come to present tonight. So again, I just want to remind you all that the recording for this will be available about a week after the event. Uh, and there will be a feedback link right after you close out of this webinar. So we appreciate any kind of feedback that you're willing to give us uh, in that brief uh, survey after this webinar concludes. So again, uh, feel free to sign up for more StriveScan events as we continue um, our you know, tour of events from all the colleges and universities across the US and, and abroad. Um, and we're excited for all of you to um, embark in the next journey. Thanks and have a great night.